My name is Miss Amby Watson and I teach math at Pierce County Middle School. Today we are going to read part one of Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This book is written in a time period where segregation is prevalent. There are some words in this book that are sensitive in today's period, but keep in mind that at this time period, it is written on the girl's birth certificate. Part one, February 12th, 1963. I am born on a Tuesday at University Hospital, Columbus, Ohio, USA. A country caught between black and white. I am born not long from the time or far from the place where my great great grandparents worked in deep rich land, unfree, dawn till dusk, unpaid, drank cool water from scooped out gourds, looked up and followed the sky's mirrored constellation to freedom. I am born as the South explodes too many people, too many years. Enslaved, then emancipated, but not free, the people who look like me keep fighting and marching and getting killed. So that today, February 12th, 1963 and every day from this moment on brown children like me can grow up free can grow up learning and voting and walking and riding wherever we want i am born in ohio but the stories of south carolina already run like rivers through my veins second daughter's second day on earth my birth certificate says female negro Mother, Mary Ann Irby, 22, Negro. Father, Jack Austin Woodson, 25, Negro. In Birmingham, Alabama, Martin Luther King Jr. is planning a march in Washington where John F. Kennedy is president. In Harlem, Malcolm X is standing on a soapbox talking about a revolution. Outside the window of University Hospital, snow is slowly falling. So much already covers the vast Ohio ground. In Montgomery, only seven years have passed since Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a city bus. I am born brown skin, black hair, and white eye. I am born Negro here and colored there. And somewhere else, the freedom singers have linked arms, their protests rising in song. Deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. And somewhere else, James Baldwin is writing about injustice, each novel, each essay changing the world. I do not yet know who I'll be, what I'll say, how I'll say it. Not even three years have passed since a brown girl named Ruby Bridges walked into an all-white all school. Armed guards surrounded her white hundreds of people, spat and called her names. She was six years old. I do not know if I'll be strong like Ruby. I do not know what the world will look like when I am finally able to walk, speak, write another Buckeye. The nurse says to my mother, already I am being named for this place. Ohio, the Buckeye State. My fingers curl into twist automatically. This is the way my mother said of every baby's hand. I do not know if these hands will become Malcolm's, raised and fisted, or Martin's, open and asking, or James's, curled around a pen. I do not know if these hands will be roses or rubies gently gloved and fiercely folded calmly in a lap on a desk around a book ready to change the world.